This is Jocko Podcast number 132 with Echo Charles and me, Jocko Willink. Good evening, Echo. Good evening. The warriors are all dead. They lie on the moor field. They struggled, but shall not enter. They went, but shall not return. The plains are flat and wide. The way home is long. Their swords lie beside them. Their black bows in their hand. Though their limbs were torn, their hearts could not be repressed. They were more than brave. They were inspired with the spirit of Wu. Steadfast to the end, they could not be daunted. Their bodies were stricken down, but their souls have taken immortality. Captains among the ghosts. Heroes among the dead. And that is an excerpt from an ancient Chinese poem written by Q. One, and there's not many details of his life. He was a patriotic poet that lived around 300 BC, and the poem refers to the spirit of Wu, which I like, because Wu means martial, as in martial arts, as in things that are related to war and things that are related to fighting. Well, that's what Wu means of war. So he's talking about the spirit of war. And, of course, China has an incredibly rich history of art and culture and thought for thousands of years. Many dynasties that have carried on that rich culture. But we also, of course, know that China has a long history of war. The knowledge about war, and we've already looked at one of the fundamental books about war and strategy from Sun Tzu, right? The Art of War. Mm -hmm. And today we're going to take a look at another important document that comes from China. It's called the 36 Stratagems. And this document has been around for a long time. And its actual origin is debated where it came from. There's some people that say Sun Tzu wrote it, actually. There's a, a another military strategist named Zhu Jiang. And some people think he wrote it. But the current prevailing view is that it's a compilation of information that was compiled by different people, different authors over the year, over the years. And the actual version that I'm using was compiled by a guy named Peter Taylor. And if you remember, so 36 stratagems. That's what it's called, the 36 stratagems. And if you remember from a recent podcast that we did, stratagem doesn't mean strategy. Mm. It doesn't mean that. It's a trick. That's what it means. It's a subterfuge. It's a, it's a sneaky maneuver to get what you want that's what a stratagem is now this book is divided up into six sections the first three are for when you're winning and the second three are for when you're losing the winning stratagems are advantageous opportunistic and attacking and the other like losing type strategies when you're losing are confusion deception and desperation (laughs) and you know what some of these we've heard before some are a new take on an old idea or an old take that we think is a new idea and all of them reinforce kind of what we know 
and allow us to think about these things a little bit different way and see them from a different angle. So here we go, the 36 stratagems. Number one, sneak across the ocean in broad daylight. And so after they give, that's, that's the actual, that's the, that's the stratagem right there. And so you gotta give a little explanation around some of them. And Peter Taylor does it in this book, he, he lines them out. And I've actually seen, there's, a, there's another copy of this same book where they all have the sort of general uh, explanation. A lot of them have the same general explanation, almost as if it's part of the same book. Mm. But to hit that part, so it says, number one, sneak across the ocean in broad daylight. What does that mean? What you often, what you see, often you do not doubt. And what is familiar becomes uninteresting and a perfect cloak for the unusual and unexpected. This stratagem means that you can mask your real purpose by using the ruse or a fake target that everyone takes for granted. Tactically, this is known as the open feint. In front of everyone, you point west when your goal is actually in the east. For example, a goalkeeper, when facing a penalty shot, will often stand to one side or the other, effectively inviting the opposing player to aim towards the open space when, in fact, the goalkeeper reacts and moves to this exact space the moment when the shot is taken, thus saving the goal. So, pretty clear. Mm -hmm. Next one, two. Besiege way to rescue Zhao. Besiege way to rescue Zhao. When the enemy is too strong to be attacked directly, then attack something they hold close to them or value dearly. So this is a little bit different than just a flank, right? Mm -hmm. A flank means I'm gonna hit your weak point. Mm -hmm. This is I'm gonna attack something that you care about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Take the indirect approach and find their Achilles heel. So that is the weak point. But the first, the first explanation is not just a weak point. It's, I'm going to attack something that you are you care about. Mm -hmm. Think about how do you, how you do this in a relationship, like well, in a business relationship or something. Yep, and insults and oh you yeah, know. there you go, oh, yeah. all kinds of things. Back to the book. The origin of this proverb is apparently from the Warring States period, when the state of Wei attacked Zhao and laid siege to its capital, Handan. Zhao turned to Qi for help. But the key general, Sun Bin, determined it would be unwise to meet the army of Wei head on, so instead he attacked their capital. On hearing the news, the army of Wei retreated in haste, and the tired troops were then ambushed and defeated. The idea here is to avoid a head-on battle with a strong enemy and instead strike at his weakness elsewhere. So that, that part we've heard before, we know that part. Mm -hmm. But I like the idea of attacking something that they care about more. Yeah, I mean that's a classic. Right, that's a classic. Like, classic is oh, I can't get to you, but I'm gonna get to your kids. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah. yeah I'll, I'll, I'll I'll kill your kids. That's always yeah. the worst, right? In mm -hmm. all your movies that you watch. Sure. <laughs> oh yeah, big time. Yeah, they always do that. What? So they as far as comparing it to a flank, like mm -hmm. a flank is like, I mean, comparatively speaking, what? Just, I mean, obviously to go to the side. Go to the side right? is the yeah, somewhere fundamental. that's not yeah. Yeah. Shielded or bunk right. bunkered in or right. whatever. Yeah. Number three, kill with a borrowed knife. Attack using the strength of another in a situation where using one's own strength is not favorable. Trick an ally into attacking him or bribe an official to turn traitor in your favor or use the enemy's own strength against him. Borrowing a knife to kill may seem rather too devious, but fundamentally it's making use of others' resources for your own gain and sometimes without your opponents knowing it. There's some underhanded stuff with this, mm -hmm. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. The idea here is to cause damage to your enemy by letting a third party, by getting a third party to do the deed. In fact, it can be said that your enemy's enemy is your friend, which we've heard before. Mm -hmm. Kill with a borrowed knife. That's a good one. I keep thinking about, when I read these, I, I think about people interacting with other people and how someone will get someone all spun up. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, can you believe Echo did this? You should say something <laughs> about that, you're right? And like, like do that way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <coughs> Number four, wait at leisure while the enemy labors. 
it is an advantage to choose the time and place for battle. In this way, you will know when and where the battle will take place while your enemy does not. Encourage your enemy to expend his energy in futile quests while you conserve your strength. When he is exhausted and confused, you attack with energy and purpose. Check. What part of jujitsu did you not understand right there? Somebody asked me that the other day. Is it, is it a tactic to let someone get tired? It yeah. hundred percent. Yeah, it's like one of the foundational <laughs> yeah. principles yeah. of yeah. why jiu-jitsu started. Yeah, I mean, and if you look at the early UFCs, if you look at Hoist Gracie in the early UFCs, mm-hmm. that that was, I would say he used that, tr- that tactic yeah. a majority of the time. Yeah, that's like what essentially jiu-jitsu is. <laughs> yeah. Like when they started it, like Helio Gracie was, yeah. you know, a little guy or whatever. And that's, yeah, that's what he would say the whole time. You cook them. They call it cooking oh. the guy. Yeah, it's part of the yeah, deal, man. Yeah, cooking them. That's <laughs> good. I like that. I haven't heard that one in a while. Nope. Number five, loot a burning house. When a country is beset by internal conflicts or when disease and famine ravages the population or when corruption and crime are rampant, then it will be unable to deal with an outside threat. This then is the best time to attack. These are devious, aren't they? <laughs> When you read them, they're devious. Hey, man, Marshall. That's the Marshall way. Yeah. You know what? I've seen some companies, some businesses that do that <coughs> right there, and they mm. do it well. Yeah. When they're really when they're really hostile, they sow the seeds of all that. All the chaos, all the ravages and all the famines and all the corruption and crime. Mm. When a company's really devious, they sow those seeds with the other company, and mm. then they watch them fall apart, and then they go in and take them down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Loot a burning house means taking personal gain from bad situations that your enemies are facing. While a house is ablaze, or during any major disturbance, there will be enough confusion to make it easy and accessible to steal or take advantage of the situation. When your enemy is in a state of confusion and chaos, it prevents the perfect opportunity to wipe them out. Number six, make a sound in the east, then strike in the west. In any battle, the element of surprise can provide an overwhelming advantage. Even when face-to-face with an enemy, surprise can still be employed by attacking where he least expects it. The idea here is to get the enemy to focus on on one location and then attack a weakly defended spot. In boxing, fainting is a body movement or an incomplete attack used primarily to create a certain reaction from the opponent. The idea is to create an opening or draw the opening into responding or draw the opponent into responding so that you may anticipate and counter with a prepared attack. In order for feints to be successful, they must make the opponent believe that a punch is a real thing coming. So we've talked about that before. You yep. can't you can't do a weak attempt at a submission. Yep. I was rolling with Andy last night. Sure. Ooh. We've been having a, we've been having some wars lately. And last night he and it's funny and this is there's a whole there's a whole thing going on because psychologically right Mm -hmm. if there's a timer I'm paying attention to it Mm -hmm. right psychologically and like I know how much time I can survive in certain situations so I might take a risk that I know hey if I end up and I'll take this risk right now there's 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 a minute and 18 seconds left I'm going to take a risk. The risk is going to take me 18 seconds. If I make it, great. If I if if the risk pays off, great. I'm going to be in a good spot. Yeah, yeah. If the risk doesn't pay off, well, then I've got. It's going to take him 10 seconds to get out. I've got 50 seconds. Mm. I know how long it's going to take to set something. The timer's going to go. We're going to be okay over on that one. (laughs) (laughs) Last night it was close. Close, what? close. I played oh, the you game. Took a risk. I just took a risk. <laughs> didn't pay off. We were off. going off. Yeah, we were going. I took the risk. Didn't pay off. Ended up in a bad situation. <laughs> sure. And and he was straightening out my arm. And and I got out of the arm lock, and he slapped a triangle on me. And I'm hard to triangle too because mm. I'm just like large, right? Yeah, yeah. He slapped a triangle on me. If you do get the triangle on me, it's going to be pretty deep. Now it's yeah, and I was like, it went. I literally, I was thinking to myself, he's he doesn't have time to finish this. He does not like (laughs) even like I don't even have to defend this right now because he doesn't have time to finish. So he slapped it on there. I didn't even defend, Mm -hmm. 
and then I was like, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> so this thing is tight, yeah. tight. And then the bell rang, <laughs> and we laughed because it's not. It happens all the time. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that timer thing is like that's a real thing. You can almost physically feel the time. Yeah. If it's if but here's time. The, here's the thing is if there's no timer if we don't have a clock running my yeah. game is different. Yeah, that's I don't, what I mean. I won't take that risk. I'm mm-hmm. super patient. Yeah. Super just, I, I you know uh, Sarge used to joke about it. Sarge would be like, oh Jocko is gonna hang on to your arm and work that arm with not moving yeah. for like seven minutes yeah he's gonna say he's hanging out it's all good with me i'm over here just i'm just i'm just cruising i got your arm i'm not letting go of it that's not Mm -hmm. happening yeah i'm gonna sit here i know that from experience. you have a little bit of you're using some strength you're using a little bit to just maintain yep i'm gonna let that happen yeah. I'm gonna let you cook. <laughs> You're gonna cook me a little bit. <laughs> but you see, you cook. Yeah. You can't cook stuff in five minutes, right? No. You know, it's hard to cook something in five minutes. Yeah, it's true. Well, yeah, th- that is true. Generally speaking, that time, like you know, it's a different. The difference between you know how like some rolls, you'll go against the wall or something. You know, yeah. you just and you go against the wall, and then sometimes. You're like, hey, we're by the wall, you oh, know, okay, all okay. in the corner or whatever. So let's go to the middle. Or sometimes, you know, depending on who you roll with, what the tempo, what the mood is, mm-hmm. you just no walls fair, all good. <laughs> you know, game. the walls part of the game. game. So that's what the timer kind of is too, you know, or that's what it feels like. You can almost feel it where it's like, okay, the time when the time goes off, the time is game. This is all yeah. part of the game now, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if For there's sure. no time, it's kind of like it doesn't have that. So you can have a. I have more fun rolling with Andy when we do, when we have the timer. Because that means every three minutes I'm taking a risk, yeah, and I'm trying to make something happen. Mm. Or, or, or if he's in a dominant position, which he, you know, he gets in really dominant positions, and he's really good at maintaining them, and he tries to get it done in that time, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, he'd be cooking me for a long time, I guess. Yeah, which would not be fun. No, so I can see how that could be. Fun. All right, next section: stratagems for opportunistic situations. Create something from nothing. Make somebody believe there was something when there was, in fact, nothing. Or simply put, lie. (laughs) (laughs) One method of using this stratagem is to create an illusion of something's existence when, in fact, it does not exist. Another is to create an illusion that something does not exist when it, in fact, does. Pretty obvious. You know, it's a good thing to think about it. Like, even if you're of the attitude that you don't want to lie. It's good to know these stratagems that other people can use them on you. Yeah, fully. And the lie, I mean, that seems like a conceptual lie. Like, you know, you know, the guy who gets fired up and puts it puts on this huge display. Isn't that sort of a lie? You know? Yeah. Like true, I'm big, true. ferocious, and crazy. True. And then it's kind of usually just to cover up something else. Yeah, that's true. Or if you get like if you're what if injured, at this moment in time? Sam Harris and Jordan Peterson just dropped in here and started having a discussion about what was a lie and what wasn't. Well, I'm sure <laughs> <laughs> that would just take this whole thing. Yeah, to another just level. to a different place. For sure. Well, I'm sure the first thing they would do is determine what is considered a lie. Like, where is no? Because the, conceptually, yeah. it's like any any deception, really. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, like, look, if me and you are in a I don't know MMA fight or something, and my ankle is straight up sprained. I'm not going to show it, mm. you know, like my natural inclination is like to, to limp on that thing, but I'm going to go out of my way to just show that I'm not, you know, it's no factor. Yeah. Is that a lie? Yeah. Yeah. It is, no. right? It's yeah, well, deception. Yeah, it's, it's deception, yeah. 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 I'm in fact I, injured. I'm I gonna, bet there, I bet we're going to get people that are like, no, a lie is technically, no, there's probably some technical definition that puts it beyond just a deception. Yeah. That's my guess. I think I it's intentional. Right deception it's yeah, weird because here's the deal we know what a lie is yeah we know what a lie is mm. we know what it is we know what is a lie and what is it i don't know man there's that gray area <laughs> i'm telling you there's check. that gray area check it's small but yeah all right we will not have a discussion about that any further <laughs> <laughs> next openly repair the gallery <laughs> roads but sneak through the passage of chen kang Deceive the enemy with an obvious approach that will take a very long time while surprising him by taking a shortcut and sneaking upon him. The cl- you know, just classic fundamental strategy. Next, I like this one. Watch the fires burning across the river. 
delay the delay entering the field of battle until all the players have become exhausted fighting amongst themselves at that point go in at full strength and pick up the pieces <laughs> when this, this is exactly remember the the person that just asked on the last podcast about how to stop getting interrupted Mm-hmm. This is what yeah. we're talking about. Uh, Do yeah. that right there. Let other people like have their conversation Dang. and fire their ammunition, and then when they're done fighting amongst themselves and they're exhausted, go in at full strength and pick up the pieces. <laughs> <laughs> when a serious conflict breaks out within the enemy alliance, all you have to do is be patient and wait quietly for the chaos to build up because once this internal conflict intensifies, then self-destruction will be the outcome. Besides the patient Besides being patient, make preparations for any advantage that might come out of the chaos. So sometimes you just got to sit across the river and watch the fires burn for that, a little while. That's interesting because that's exactly what that is. That's exactly that whole, what that is. Yeah, and because you're compelled to interrupt back, yeah, yeah. you know, no. and all this stuff. But no. yeah, man, just it's good. Just sit back and remember that. Let one. the fires burn. Yeah, let the, let fire. the fires burn. Number ten. Hide a knife behind a smile. Charm and ingratiate yourself with your enemy and then when you have gained his trust move against him in secret (laughs) Sun Tzu's most often quoted advice was to keep your friends close and your enemies closer But here the stratagem is far more duplicitous In that it advises that the sole purpose of keeping your enemy Close is not just to understand them and be prepared for any aggression from them, but is to deceive them with a treasonable act that would see their downfall. Hide behind a knife with a smile. So I was having a conversation with a guy the other day, and the question is, if you've run something up the chain of command to the absolute top, you can't bring it up anymore. Mm -hmm. And actually, this was a person in the fire services. Mm-hmm. If you've brought something, so fire departments, if you've brought something up the chain of command to the absolute top and you still haven't gotten what you wanted, what would you do then? They were asking me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, there's some, a lot of things you could do then in that situation. You know, you've gone, like, because the, the, the topic was basically if training should be harder, right? Mm-hmm. If people aren't training harder and I'm bringing up the chain of command and people say, no, it's fine, no, it's fine, no, it's fine, mm-hmm. and you believe that this is wrong. And people should be training hard, so we're more prepared to do our job. What would you do then, Jocko? And I was like, well, you know, you, well, you could, you know, what you could do, you could say, okay, you know what, you don't want to listen to me, fine, I'm going public. <laughs> I'm going to write an article in the newspaper about how our department is not prepared to handle emergencies. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Okay. And then they're going to listen. Now. Let's think about that. Let's think about that outcome, right? Mm-hmm. The outcome is there's a decent chance you get fired. Yeah. You definitely aren't getting promoted. Mm-hmm. You and, and so whether you get fired or you don't get promoted, you get stuck in this position where you have no influence. And by the way, did you get any cha- training change? No. Now, could there is there a possibility that the public takes note and goes, oh wow, this is wrong, and we're gonna we're gonna have another election and we're gonna replace this fire chief or whatever? Is there a chance that, that could happen? There's a chance. How'd that fire chief end up in that position? He's a political guy. He knows how to make things happen. He knows how to take care of himself. And if you think he's going to let some little article out in a newspaper get him deposed from his position, mm. you're wrong. Yeah. You're underestimating your your enemy at this point. Yeah. So don't do that. So I said, what if instead of doing that, you wrote, let's say, same idea you wrote a positive article about the fire department and it made everyone look good and the chief looked at you like you were spreading the good word (laughs) and he says oh you know what I appreciate you putting out that article that was really good it made us look good you might not say that part but he's like I liked your article well you know chief I just want to let people know what we're doing over here and now you're building trust Mm -hmm. now you're building trust with him and now he says oh you know what yeah you you know what you should run this thing over here why don't you run that little thing and you take that thing and you run it you keep it in the box that you know he would like it in And then he goes, hey, you know, you did a good job with that. I'm going to get you up a little bit higher. Yeah, yeah. And eventually you get to a position of influence where you actually can make the change that you want to ch- make. Mm. Now, again, the thing is, when I say things like this, people are always, they don't want to hear it. Like when when, when someone, they, they think they know me and they're like, oh, you know what? And I was saying this the other day at a different company. Mm-hmm. 
that everybody wants me to say, you know what you got to do in a situation like that? You come in with a battle axe <laughs> and you start swinging and you take out everyone that's in your way. That's yeah. how you win. Yeah. And I wish that that was true, but it's actually not true. <laughs> it's not true. You don't win. <coughs> you don't win when you do that. Yeah. You have to think. You have to play the game. What you have to do is hide a knife behind a smile. Now, that's that's very tre- treasonous, he calls it. Mm. But if your goal, if your goal, let's take the fire department, if your goal is to actually do a better job and, and save more people's lives because you've trained more, and that's the knife that you're trying to get out in the end, is that a bad thing? No, yeah. it's actually a good thing. You're not hiding a knife behind a smile. Yeah. You're hiding save lives behind a smile. Yeah. That's what you're doing. This takes tactical patience. Yeah. Tactical patience. That's a word people used to throw around because they thought it sounded cool. It does. It does sound cool, right? It's a real thing, though. Mm. And if you don't have tactical patience to play the, to win the long war, it's a long war. Years. It can take years. This situation that they're talking to this fire guy the other day, that situation could take years to, Mm. to unfold. Years. But. And, and we've talked about if you just make a stink and cause problems and run up the run your mouth and cause all this all this focus and bring the spotlight to the bad areas guess what you're not even gonna get you're not gonna get moved up and put in a better position yeah so don't do that yeah so so crazy that's like a lot of times the advice you give is literally the exact opposite of what it feels like we should do it's like you you feel like hey i need to do this i just need to know how can you tell me how and you don't tell how you say hey wait you need to do this no you don't need to do that you need to do the exact opposite of that you're like oh man it's not what you think you're supposed to do you jam me up but um i will say through experience that your answers tend to be right 100 percent of the time yeah, people, a lot of times, you don't want to hear me. And when I was younger, I didn't want to hear me either. Yes, that part is true. Yeah. For sure. When, when I was younger, I was like, oh, you know, well, screw that guy. Yeah, what am I going to do? Uh, uh, cultivate a relationship with this this guy? Yeah, no he's weak. Way. No. Yeah, he's yeah. unsat. You know, there's a yeah. there's a military term, unsat. unsat. Yeah, yeah. True. And I used to, that used to be my, that used to be, <laughs> that used to be as bad as, that was the worst adjective I could use. Yeah. I'd be like, that guy's unsat. <laughs> Or, you know, whatever, a piece of gear. People are like, oh, how's that gear? Unsat. Yeah. Because you'd get marked, like, on an inspection, unsat, <laughs> which yeah. meant unsatisfactory. Right, right, yeah. right. I need to bring that back. Yeah. I, man, it's been a while. But, yeah, Jeremy Cakenuts used to always say that. Sat or unsat. Because unsat. you could have sat, unsat. too. You'd be like, that was, if you were to say to me, like, oh, how was that dinner last night? Sat. Meaning uh, yeah. it's, it was, it was get, you know, yeah. yeah, it was good. It was they fine. They never said that. They yeah. never said sat. They always said unsat. You, you have to put sat and unsat kind of together for sat to make any sense whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> Naturally. Check. All right, number 11. Preserve the plum tree, or sorry, sacrifice the plum tree to preserve the peach tree. There are circumstances in which you must sacrifice short, short-term objectives in order to gain the desired long-term goal. This is the scapegoat stratagem whereby someone else suffers the consequences and the, so the rest do not. Pretty, pretty straightforward, that one. I think some of these stratagems that are straightforward, what's good about hearing them is that you recognize them. Because yeah. it might seem obvious, but then you, when you're doing it, you do, you're like, well, I don't know. We could, and you say, oh, wait, you know what we're actually doing? Yeah. We're, we're, we're sacrificing the plum tree to spare the peach tree. That's what we're going to do right now. Once you commit to that or you understand it fully, then you can execute it with more authority. Yeah, especially in the in the wild too cuz like if you have that that framework to stick to, you know, like oh, this is what we're going to do kind yeah. of thing and all these other variables happen on you know, unplanned stuff, but you you have that to stick to. It, yeah. it that, makes it way more clear. That's the commander's intent. The yeah. commander's intent yeah. is very clear and so we know what we're going to do. Yeah. That's what's going to happen. Number 12. Take the opportunity to pilfer a goat. <laughs> mm. uh, while carrying out your plans, you need to be flexible enough to take advantage of any opportunity that presents itself, however small, and avail yourself of any profit, however slight. That's a good one. I think it's I think it's important to keep in mind, though, that you don't want to get pulled off track, right? Mm. You want to keep focused on your mission, and all of a sudden you can be running around gathering up goats while your real target escapes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's not get too crazy with that one. But again, let's keep it in mind. Yeah. 
Next section, stratagems for attacking situations. Number 13, stomp the grass to scare the snake. Do something unaimed but spectacular to provoke a response of the enemy, thereby giving away his plans or position or just taunt him. Do something unusual, strange, and unexpected as this will arouse the enemy's suspicion and disrupt his thinking. This is recon by fire. Mm. Just fire some rounds and maybe the enemy shoots back at you. Now, now you know where they are. Next, borrow a corpse to resurrect the soul. Take an institution, a method, or even an ideology that has been forgotten or discarded and appropriate it for your own purpose. Revive something from the past by giving it a new purpose or bring to life old ideas, customs, or traditions and reinterpret them for your, to fit your purposes. Here's, here's an example is like Hitler. He brought back, he would bring back like old Viking symbols. Mm. And root that root the Viking tradition, like hey, you're a Viking. We're Vikings, and they have like little symbols. That's that's exactly what it is. Gotcha. And use that so then people have a deeper connection. Yeah, yeah. With with this thing. Yeah. Makes sense. Next, fifteen. Entice the tiger to leave its mountain lair. Never directly attack an opponent whose advantage is derived from its position. Instead, lure him away from his position, thus separating him from his source of strength. The stratagem is based on the idea that the tiger is powerful only when it's in its natural environment, but if removed from that environment, it becomes weaker and more vulnerable. I don't know if a tiger's weak in a (laughs) not a good environment. Mm -hmm. I think a tiger could still kill me pretty quickly, even in a city street. Maybe in the water, he couldn't. No, that's not true. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, come into a person. No, yeah, in yeah. Sri Lanka, hmm. the tigers would swim, like they would swim and pull fish, get get into boats and pull fishermen to their death. <laughs> yeah, how's that for a nightmare? <laughs> Dang, that's rough. That's that, again pretty clear. You know what this is in jujitsu? You get someone to play that not their game. Yeah. Oh, you got a good guard. Cool. I'm gonna pull guard on you. Or really, what? Why jujitsu is founded yet again? It's you take a guy who's, you know, what's the traditional method of fighting? I'm going to stand up, throw punches and kicks at him. Yeah. So jujitsu is like, oh, you take him out of the punching and kicking situation yep. to the ground. No punches, no kicks, and effective. Boom. That's the jujitsu. Yep. You're not in your special place anymore. <laughs> this is this is an interesting one, number 16. In order to capture, one must let, one must let loose. Cornered prey will often mount a final desperate attack. To prevent this, you let the enemy believe he still has a chance for freedom. His will to fight thus dampened by his desire to escape. When in the end, the freedom is proven a falsehood and the enemy's morale will be defeated and he will surrender without a fight. So we've we've heard that one. Mm-hmm. That's the golden bridge. We just heard it from Frederick the Great. I think we also heard it from Vegetius. Yeah. They're saying, give the people a little out. They see that they see that chance to escape. They, they, I remember, I think it was Vigetius was saying they they would just leave their weapons because they want to get yeah. away so bad. They just yep. leave their weapons, and then you're just waiting for them. <laughs> Slaughter. If an enemy has no way to retreat, then desperation will increase their bravery and ferocity of their fight. So you always offer them room for retreat, and in such a retreat, their their morale will be low. Next, tossing out a brick. To get a jade gem bait someone by making him believe he gains something or just make him react to it and obtain something valuable from him in return pretty straightforward the real meaning is to attempt is to tempt through the offering of something useless in order to gain something valuable it is a tactic that utilizes baiting the enemy the point of this tactic is to throw out bait that does not seem like bait On the other hand, it's important to have a keen sense of judgment to ensure you do not take the enemy's bait in return. The ability to look past the immediate gain and see the long-term cost is a valuable skill. So if you're in a leadership situation 
sometimes you hold the line, you appear to hold the line on something, mm-hmm. and then you then you let you let it go. Right. You like, know, like like yeah. you, you want to do something a certain way, and I'm like, well, echo, I don't it's something I don't care about. Yeah. But yeah. I hold the line, I'm just gonna give you a nice victory with the end of it. I already know yeah. that, but yeah, no, so I, I feel like oh yeah, yeah, you feel like, Oh yeah, see, I was right. Yeah. You're happy. I made it happen. Yeah, I made yeah. it happen. I was able to convince Jocko that yeah, this was yeah. the right <laughs> thing to do. I didn't care. I'm not gonna right. tell you that. Nope. I was like, No, you know what? Yeah, so it seems like a good design <laughs> for that T shirt. <laughs> Let's go with it. <laughs> Next, defeat the enemy by capturing their chief. If the enemy's army is strong but it's but is allied to the commander only by money, superstition, or threats, then take aim at the leader. If the commander falls, the rest of the army will disperse or come over to your side. If, however, they are allied to the leader through loyalty, then beware. The army can continue to fight on after his death out of vengeance. That one's straightforward, but that is something that's very important to recognize: is is what kind of loyalty the, the people that you're going against. What kind of loyalty do they have? Mm. I work with businesses all the time. There's businesses that establish a massively loyal employee base, mm. and the people are there way they are loyal. They're not there for the money. The money is like part of it, mm. but they're there because they want to be there. Yeah. Those companies, and somebody somebody comes in and starts trying to mess with those companies, yeah. it's bloodbath. <laughs> <laughs> it is a bloodbath. Okay, now that's the now we're getting into stratagems when you are losing. So things change a little bit. Now we're on the losing side. Number one is stratagem stratagems for confused situations. This is a good one. Remove the firewood from under the pot. If something must be destroyed, destroy the source. The strength of the fire determines whether the water will boil, and the strength of the fire comes from the burning wood. It may not be wise to confront the boiling water directly, but by taking the wood from under the cooking pot, the boiling water will soon be cool. In other words, do not confront your opponent's strong points, but instead remove the source of his strength. Yeah, that's I I, I don't know that I necessarily agree with the last part there, that not attacking the strong points. I think it's you I would say watch out for the volatile points. Mm. And you you don't attack the things that can do you damage like boiling water mm. You attack something that's a little bit detached and yeah. you go after the source. I think what he's talking about is like um, What they call it? It's like It's it's a problem-solving method if I'm not mistaken. There's two there's direct and there's systemic. So oh, yeah, for sure Yes, you thing. are correct. Yeah, yeah. so like you yeah, attack the, the source, right. you know of these problems It's like you know the like your your plant at home, right? You got a tree growing in the yard. The leaves are they're turning brown. Yeah, that's a problem. You know, it's not even fall. The leaves turning brown. You know what? Paint those leaves green. <laughs> that's the worst. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's, right. that's attacking that's the boiling the, water. That's yeah. a direct. Yeah, that's a direct problem solving approach. Or, or I always say water the leaves. Don't water the leaves. You don't water the leaves. Mm. You water the roots, and then over time, that's a systemic approach. That's the one. Yeah, like how you roll. Deep. Sure. Next. Dis- number 20. Disturb the water and catch a fish. Create confusion and use this confusion to further your own goals. Originally, it means to stir the water, the sentiments, in order to cloud the, ver- the vision of the fish and therefore catch the fish. Here it means to create confusion so that the enemy does not know what is real and what is not. A confused enemy is more vulnerable to any attack. I was I was rolling with Taylor the other day. Sure. And we were doing take we were standing up, you know, we were getting after it. And Taylor's if you know for those of you that don't know, Taylor's a beast. He's he's like barely human. He's a beast. Mm-hmm. And he wrestled and he does jujitsu and he's just a sick grappler and fighter. By the way, no one will fight him, which which really yes. makes me mad. He's like he will fight anyone and no one will fight him. Yeah. He just keeps destroying people. No one wants to fight him because you get nothing out of it because he's not he doesn't his record is you know I think he's three and zero right now, so you when yeah. you if you beat a three and zero fighter that means nothing. Yeah. If you lose <laughs> to a three and zero fighter, you, you, that that's not good for you. Yeah. So no one smart is going to take a fight with him. I'm probably not helping by saying this right now. Yeah. No, Anybody you know. that's hearing this is like, okay, well that's one person I'm not going to fight. Uh, my point in this was, we were we were doing takedowns or we had gotten to a point where we were doing takedowns and. He must have thrown 87 fakes at me in like three seconds. 
where I was, I had no idea what was happening. He's like, Papa, 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 don't over here. Papa, Papa, if I come out. Yeah. So he definitely disturbed the water yeah, yeah, yeah. and caught the fish. <laughs> yeah, that used to happen with Sarge too. Sarge, who's an awesome wrestler and and jujitsu, and if if he hadn't been doing much wrestling, he would he would. I could read that he's gonna come because he's just got a sick blast double. Like mm-hmm. Sarge's blast double is just sick, and uh, and he just comes in full power, and it's just hard to stop. Mm-hmm. But if he hasn't been wrestling, he re- he knows he can just he just goes into like, okay, I'm gonna hit a blast double. Like I'm tired of playing around, I'm gonna hit a blast right, double, right. and so he gets that look on his face, and I could read it because I know him for <laughs> 25 years, and he get the blast double look on his face. <laughs> Sure, the and best double I remember one time, you know, I, I must have sprawled on him like two or three times in in a day, and and it was it was kind of I could see he was a little bit surprised that he wasn't that he didn't take me down, and I was like, so I told him, I said, hey, you know, when you haven't wrestled for a while, you don't set it up, you just do it, mm. and then we wrestled again, and he set up again. Just forty-seven little touches in my face. I pull my arm, check mm-hmm. this here, push me there, drag this, slap here, boom, and all of a sudden, yeah. the, here comes the blast double, which I didn't know was coming. Yeah. So that makes a big difference. Yeah, get them waters blurred up. Yep. All right. Slough off the cicada's golden shell. Cicada is like a cricket, or like a grasshopper. Mm. This stratagem is mainly used to escape from an enemy of superior force. Mask yourself by either leaving your flamboyant traits behind, thus going incognito, or just masquerade yourself and create an illusion to fit your goals and distract others. So, the grasshoppers and crickets at some point in their what's it called a life cycle? Lifespan, life cycle. Sure. Yeah, they yeah. they basically their skin. Whatever it is, their shell. Yeah, they have to. They get rid of it. They molt. Yeah, a lot of bugs. Get, do they that. get rid of it. Yeah. Well, you can do that too. Yeah. You can leave some stuff behind and make people think that's still going on, but really you're escaping. Yeah. When a cricket has grown to a certain stage, it sheds its outer shell and leaves the empty shell behind. This empty shell is often mistaken for a real cricket. Yeah. It's kind of like on Total Recall. Remember Total Recall, the movie Arnold Schwarzenegger? I do the old remember that, one. but There's I don't two of them. fully remember it. Yeah, so. Oh, break. yeah, 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 yeah. He comes in as that woman. Yeah, well, yes. Okay, oh, and dang, the, yeah, yeah, there's yeah, that yeah. part too. Yeah, the, the lady. Yeah, yeah, two weeks, right? Then it malfunctions oh, and he yeah. throws the head and it's an explosion. I was thinking more like the hologram. They always, they had this hologram thing where it's like, oh, you know. It's him, but oh. it's just the hologram. Meanwhile, yeah. he's, I think, escaping or something like this. I went and saw, when I was in college, I had to go see a Shakespeare play, which was cool. I'll, I'm down with that. I would bring my Shakespeare book to the place. I had my notes <laughs> when I was there. <laughs> okay, cool. And it was funny because after the play was over, they went, they like brought out the cast mm. and was, t- you know, kind of introducing them with some details about their career. Mm. And the woman, that played that woman, that head came apart and Arnold Schwarzenegger was inside her. Yeah, yeah. She was in the Shakespeare play. Yeah. And here she was just getting off stage from crushing some Shakespeare. And I think it was Richard III. And the highlight that they pointed out of her whole career <laughs> <laughs> was that she was like the woman <laughs> in the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie whose head came apart in yeah. Total Recall. That was actually, and then then it was in, in the pamphlet that they give you when you go to the play. Yeah, yeah. It was telling program. this guy did this, and this guy was has been in this, and this guy was in the royal this, and you know. And then it's got her, yeah, and yeah. it says she played the woman yeah. in Total Recall. Yeah, but it, here's the thing about that: like on paper, literally on paper, that doesn't that sounds like oh this little thing, but bro, that was a huge part of the movie. Let's face it, two weeks. <laughs> How long are you going to be on Mars? Two weeks. And it's like, whatever. Do you have any vegetables or something like that? Mm. And she goes, two weeks. Oh. Oh, dang. The thing starts malfunctioning. Boom, boom. They identify him. Yeah, man. It's a big part of the movie. Bigger than Shakespeare. Arguably, yeah. (laughs) No, not arguably. (laughs) 
All right, this is one is a little bit of a contradiction. Listen to this one. Number 22, shut the door to catch the thief. To capture the enemy, you must plan prudently if you want to succeed. Do not rush into action before you move in for the kill. First, cut off your enemy's escape routes and cut off any routes through which outside help can reach them. So that is the opposite Mm -hmm. of having a golden bridge, having an escape route that your people can get out of. So you gotta, you gotta, no, does that mean that they're both invalid? No, actually to me it means they're both valid. Yeah. But you need to recognize because, for instance, let's say you're in a situation where you surround the enemy and all of a sudden they start fighting really hard. Because you're like, hey, yeah, I'm gonna fall 22. Well, I'm, gonna ca- I'm gonna surround everyone, I'm gonna k- keep them locked in there. Mm-hmm. You do that and they start fighting really hard and you're losing a lot of guys. Mm-hmm. Then you know, hey, open up a little spot for them to escape. Yeah. And let them run away and we'll be waiting for them over here. Yeah. So. Just because things are opposites do not does not mean they negate each other. Yeah, it's one of those deals where it, you, you know it's circumstantial, right? Like in jujitsu, it's like, oh yeah, does this scenario, you know, going against this guy, does this, um, should I use strength and power, and should I hustle a lot? Will that strategy work with this guy, or is it like, okay, I should play more passive or something like yeah, that? No, no, that's true. And actually, to get even more tactical. In jiu-jitsu, you could, you could, l- let's say you mount someone and they start just getting crazy because they don't want to, they're good getting completely nuts and you're trying to choke them, trying to choke them because you've got every, and they're getting nuts and you can't do it. Mm-hmm. If you open a little spot for them where they think they can sneak out, but you're waiting for them there with the arm lock. Yeah, yeah. Get the W. <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah, that is really how it kind of works where, yeah, when you get mount, you want to hold position. I mean, as far as traditional jiu-jitsu for lack of a better term you get mount you want to hold the position right mm-hmm. you don't want to lose position you get it flipped over but if you can hold the mount good but if he's big strong yeah. he starts you know that last desperation attempt boom you gotta kind of let him hopefully he turns over yeah. really that's usually what they do if they don't have yeah. experience and then boom you, you so you essentially give up the mount but but you can even, even like if you talk about a big strong guy that's you're more experienced even just you could prevent them from pushing you up and away, right? You could lock that door down where there's no escape, or you could let them do it a little bit. You right. give them that little thing, and then boom, yeah, arm lock. Just whatever is better for the that situation. Sure. Next, befriend a distant state while attacking a neighbor. It is known that nations that border each other become enemies, while nations separated by distance. Next, number twenty-three. Befriend a distant state while attacking a neighbor. It is known that nations that border each other become enemies while nations separated by distance and obstacles make better allies. When you are the strongest in one field, your greatest threat is from the second strongest in your field, not the strongest from another field. That's a, that's a good thing to think about. Mm-hmm. That's a good thing to think about. When you are the strongest in one field, your greatest threat threat is from the strong second strongest in your field. That makes sense. I see that in business all the time, right? Mm. The, the 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 company that makes pizzas isn't worried about the company that makes cars. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Right? They're yes, worried about the is. other companies that make pizzas. Yep. Next, twenty four. Obtain safe passage to conquer the state of Gyo. Gyo is a state. Borrow the resources of an ally to attack a common enemy. Once the enemy is defeated, use those resources to turn on the ally that lent you them in the first place. That's underhanded situation right there. It's an underhanded situation right there. Isn't it? Yeah, it's bad. Yeah. Be careful with that Seems one. Like it. But you can see, it, now it's something you got to watch out for. Well, if that's your enemy to begin with, I'm assuming. Yeah, if it's your enemy to begin with, but if how much of your enemy is going to help you? Uh-huh. And now they help you, and then you just turn and stab <laughs> them in the back. <laughs> got to be careful with that one. I think one. that's the de- definition of backstabbing. Yeah. Yeah, that might be the de- That is the actual <laughs> definition. All right, next one. Stratagems for deception situations. Number 25. Replace the beams with rotten timbers. 
disrupt the enemy's formations, interfere with their methods of operations, change the rules which they are used to following, and go contrary to their standard training. That's all really good stuff. In this way, you remove the supporting pillar, the common link that makes a group of men an effective fighting force. This goes back to what you just said. I mean, it's clearly go away from what they're used to, right? That's what we do. That's what jujitsu is supposed to be. Everyone's going to, like you said, they're going to stand and try and punch you. We're not going to do that. We're going to take them down to the ground. Next, 26. Point at the mulberry tree while cursing the locust tree. To discipline, control, or warn others whose status position or status or position excludes them from direct conversation or confrontation, use analogy and innuendo. When names are not used directly, those accused cannot retaliate without revealing their complicity. Oh, oh, oh that's <laughs> sneaky. Mm-hmm. You know, that's like when you're in the meeting mm-hmm. and there's the person up the chain of command, they haven't been showing up on time, and mm-hmm. you start saying, you know, we got people, you know, Bill hasn't been on time, and you're really talking about them. I have to use this sometimes. <laughs> have to use this sometimes, because we go work with companies, <coughs> and the company, let's say, let's say the CEO brings us into the company. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we figure out that the CEO is the one that's the root of the problem. Mm. And one of the reasons that they're the root of the problem is because they don't think they need to change anything. And so they bring us in to change everyone else. Mm. Guess who needs change? The big man. Mm -hmm. The big man, the reason that they don't wanna change is because they got the ego that prevents them from listening. So to go in and directly confront them on what they need to change is not going to be effective. Mm. So to go in and give, I've given, I've given a whole presentation. I did this one time where I gave a whole presentation. Maybe I've done it more times, but there's one time that I specifically remember. I gave a whole presentation to you know, the 15 people, the senior executive leadership of a company. Mm. The entire presentation was directed at one person, the CEO. <laughs> And I was going, it was about ego, it was about, you know, keeping that in check and how you don't know everything and how you got to let your, listen to your subordinates and all those things. He wasn't doing any of those things. Yeah, yeah. So. Isn't there like a basic tactic that I think people do all the time with, instead of, you know, like I'm the boss and I'm holding a company meeting mm-hmm. or whatever. And, <laughs> and you know, let's say there's one guy who always shows up late to work. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And in the meeting, he'll be like. Hey guys, we we got to show up on time. It's very important, but the, just the very the use of the word we rather than pointing at one guy. You know, we got to show up on time. We got to do this. It's kind of like the person who it who he's talking about. Yeah. Kind of like he feels. His, yeah, that's a good it, way implicity. to start. Yeah. There's some people that even they're not part of that we. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. so sometimes you have to yeah. escalate that into yeah. you. Yeah, but that defeats the purpose of that. Yeah, it does that, defeat that the purpose of that. Gym. Yeah. You yeah. can oh, if you if this stratagem doesn't work, you might have to escalate into something a little bit more direct. Yeah, you know, yeah. break out the battle axe. Yeah, <laughs> that's always the last option, sure. just to make sure everyone wants to break out the battle axe. That's what everybody wants to do. Yep. Next twenty-seven, feign madness, but keep your balance. Hide behind the mask of a fool, a drunk, or a madman to create confusion about your intentions and motivations. Lure your opponent into underestimating your ability until, overconfident, he drops his guard. Then you may attack. Yeah. Is that like the movie White Men Can't Jump? You ever see that? That's how he did it. Woody. Oh, he made it like he couldn't play ball? Yeah, like he was just this dork, what do you call it, chump, whatever, that's what they'd call him. Yeah. Chump, like he's super dorky, he goes, and everyone else is just so cool, and boom, flashy, and all the stuff, he comes in, he's, a, he's super nerdy, and, you know, boom, of course they pick him, you know, kind of thing, and then he beats them. Would he beat them with flashiness, or would he beat them with, with traditional, let's call it just Hoosier-style hard work and yeah basketball. well no he had legitimate skill he was like this so yeah he'd come in he'd be super dorky and then um how did he, at first he tricked them so he came in the introduction to him he was like acting all dorky and then the guys wesley snipes and them they're all playing basketball and they're you know getting into little arguments or whatever one guy gets hurt or his bunion i don't know something and they're like hey we need another guy and then the guy's like you know let's you know get him or whatever 
So they're like, ha, 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 you know, yeah, you got him, whatever. They play. He ends up to be pretty good. Doesn't show a lot, but mm-hmm. he's like pretty solid. And then they're like, hey, you guys lucked out. You had this, you know, dorky guy. You guys kind of lucked out. And he's like, oh, yeah, you know, maybe you did luck out. Or maybe I'm just better than you. But they're already convinced he's this dorky guy. And they're like, oh, I'm better than you. He's like, all right, well, let's bet kind of thing. And they're already convinced. It's a pool shark scenario. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Same exact thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty obvious one. And I think I think one thing that, again, to take away from this is if you know these things, you're less likely to be suckered in by them. Yeah. That's, that's the most important thing. Yeah, the, you say the pool shark thing. I saw a guy who really clumsily tried to do that. Mm-hmm. He'd come, I had worked in a nightclub. We had a pool table in there. And this guy came in and he like acts like he's like, the, he comes in just a normal guy. He comes in with his own cue, yeah. by the way, his own pool stick. Which is an indicator. Yeah, like total giveaway. And, <coughs> and he comes in and then immediately when like he kind of enters the little scene you know the little area where yeah. the pool, he acts like he's just kind of drunk and just real oblivious you know he just total just switches to a different guy and here's the thing we you can't let drunk people walk around in the bar uh-huh. so you know when waitresses or other or the manager would come by they'd be like hey is that guy, that guy's too drunk like why are you kind of like keep an eye on him and i'm like but he's not drunk. He's like acting drunk. Mm-hmm. So you, I go talk to him just to sort of make sure. And he's just like all normal talking to me. I'm like, yeah. oh man. But yeah, he tried. No one, I mean, it wasn't no one, like. No one would get money from. He, he wouldn't get money from anyone. Well, here's the thing. No, because it was like a nightclub. It wasn't a competitive pool hall. <laughs> no one cared. <laughs> no one's going to take his. No yeah. one's even going to bet. They're like, bro, we're just cruising. Like, why are you, you know, wanting to bet kind of thing? I'm not saying that happened, yeah. but I'm saying that's the attitude. I guess in this day and age, you'd have to be pretty dumb. To yeah. fall for this in yeah. a pool hall scenario. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll just beat this guy. You got to really think you can beat him, right? <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> Otherwise, you just be dumb. Yep. All right, next. Remove the ladder when the enemy has ascended to the roof. This is another one that kind of is a little bit contradictory. With baits and deceptions, lure your enemy into treacherous, treacherous terrain, then cut off his lines of communication and avenue of escape. To save himself, he must fight both your own forces and the elements of nature. Okay, I see what makes it a little bit different. It's the elements of nature part. Because yeah. otherwise, we're just doing something that we talked about wasn't good, which is don't give them any escape, then they're gonna fight really hard. Mm. But if you put them in a situation where they gotta fight both the elements of nature and you, that makes sense. Mm. 29 deck the tree with false blossoms tying silk blossoms on a dead tree gives the illusion that the tree is healthy through the use of artifice and disguise make something of no value appear valuable of no threat appear dangerous of no use appear useful pretty straightforward you know who does a lot of that stilts when you roll with stilts mm. He like baits. He he puts his arm. He's super flexible. Yes, and he'll put his arm way over there, and yeah. it'll be all obvious. <laughs> mm-hmm. I've I've tried to tell him still when you hear this, if you backed off your your exposure a little bit, it'd be more believable. Yeah, right. It doesn't smell real. It doesn't smell real. He's he like taps the ground with his arm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he sticks it all out there like. <laughs> And he bends it enough so it's almost in a perfect chimera. Like, all you gotta do is go for this, but he's so flexible. If you go for it, he's gonna off bounce, he's gonna put his hooks in. Yeah. Because he's six foot something, like six foot six. And super flexible. You ever think with him, I don't know if this is the case or not, but you ever think, because I think this every once in a while, where he's overdoing it. Because he's trying, you know, it's oh, like a like a I, charade. You're right. He that might be part of it. Yeah, you know, he's, he's overdoing that so much so that you don't do it. Because and actually, actually, you're right. We've had that conversation. Mm. He's told me before that sometimes he would stick something out because he knew I had it so good that if yeah, he just yeah. tried to make it look so obvious, I wouldn't go for yes, it. And he exactly. was right. Yeah. He was actually correct. Yeah. There's a lot of times when I see him do something, I I'm suspect with everything he does. Yeah, everything he does, I'm suspect. Yep. Any two hundred percent. Like you think you're gonna pass the guard, he's gonna he's got some little scam going. Yeah. He's trying to trick you. Yep. So be careful. Yeah. Number thirty. <laughs> some scam. Scam. <laughs> he's gonna stab you in the back. <laughs> Make the host and the guest exchange roles. Usurp leadership in a situation where you are normally subordinate. Infiltrate your target. 
initially pretend to be a guest to be accepted but develop from inside and become the owner later <laughs> like that. well that's the same thing same thing I already talked about with the fire department scenario because that method is a lot better than the method of battle axe because you don't even make it through the front door if you're holding an axe right they don't want to let you yeah. in there yeah, actually, the more I kind of listen to you, kind of, <laughs> is the, the the battle axe approach, really, most of the time, all that does is, like, create another war. For sure. Like, you just basically took one war and made another war in there. Now mm-hmm. you got two major wars, by the way. Mm-hmm. That seems to be the result. You know, just to give everyone a little bit of relief, mm-hmm. where the battle axe is appropriate, 100% appropriate, mm-hmm. is with yourself in your own life. Huh. You know what I mean? That's the difference. <laughs> that doesn't give anybody relief. Yeah, it does. Because <laughs> you can use that. You want to use it. <coughs> Not on ourselves. You want to use it, but you got to use it on yourself. Not on yourself. I oh, use you're it saying on people don't want to use it on themselves. People want to use it on others. use it on yourself. How do you going to fix yourself? You fix it. All right. Well, listen. The, I mean, well. Uh, you got that weakness. You <laughs> <laughs> I know, bro. But see, that's the exact thing I'm talking about with you. Because so. the strange thing is that the other methodology doesn't work with yourself. If you're like negotiating no. with yourself, like, yeah, oh, yeah. you know what? I'm not really that weak. I'm going to play the long game yeah. with myself. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I think just one donut. Not that big of a deal. <laughs> yep. I mean, really. Playing just one game. donut. Yep. Don't do that. No. Battle axe. Yeah. See, so that uh, yet again goes along with your whole thing where, bro. I don't want to hear that. When I say I want to bring out the battle axe, right, Jocko, right? You want it to be for everyone else, yeah, the not other for guy, you. the guy causing the problems yeah. for me. But that's not the way it works. I know, you bro. only can use the battle axe on yourself. <laughs> that's where you use it. And when you do that, what you do is you do solve the problem. It's yeah. the actual. So it's <laughs> it's interesting. There's a dichotomy here. Mm-hmm. I tell people with with everyone else, don't use the battle axe. That's where they want to use the battle axe. Yeah. They don't want to use the battle axe on themselves. That's where I tell them to use the battle axe. Yeah. It's a strange world. So if you unfair. can figure that right it's there unfair. out, life gets a lot easier. Yeah. Well, it gets but, harder at first, but it ends up easier. But yeah. It's it's so 1,000 million percent. Can something be 1,000 million percent Not true? really, actually. But if it could, this yeah, would this be, would one, be of those one, one of those things. Yeah, right, sure. And it's yet again one of your things where it's like, hey, Jocko, I'm I'm trying to do this. I need to do this. Tell me the best way to do it. And your and your answer isn't okay. This is how you do this better. It's hey, you don't want to do that. You want to do this. Oh, by the way, that's the exact opposite of what you think you need mm-hmm. to do. That's your whole thing. Same exact thing with your battle axe analogy. You're like I'm like hey, I need to take a battle axe to my boss, man. He just doesn't get it. All this stuff. And you're like oh yeah, oh no, you don't. You actually have to take the battle axe to yourself. Mm-hmm. That's your whole thing. Yes, it is. Yeah. Because. Because if you take the battle axe to your boss, you're going to get yeah, mad yeah. at you. Create another war. If you war. take it to yourself and you cut off the the hostility, mm-hmm. you, sh- you you s- smash the, d- the hostility that you have towards your boss, if you use the battle axe on that hostility and you start treating him with respect and trying to build a relationship, guess what? You're going to win. <laughs> if you use the battle axe on him, he's going to break out a bigger battle axe. And guess what? He has one because he's the boss. <laughs> He's got yes. a much bigger battle axe. Yes, he does. And technically, isn't that the whole watering the roots thing? You know, the, the systemic problem solving. Mm. Start with yourself, you know? Well, that's that's definitely part of it. Yeah, yeah kind of. That's part of it. fit it in yeah. there. Next. Stratagems for desperate situations. Number 31. The beauty trap. Send your enemy beautiful women to cause discord within his camp. The stratagem can work on three levels. First, the ruler becomes so enamored with the beauty that he neglects his duties and allows his vigilance to wane. Second, other males at court will begin to display aggressive behavior that inflames minor differences, hindering cooperation and destroying morale. Third, other females at court, motivated by jealousy and envy, begin to plot intrigues, further exacerbating the situation. This is also known as the honey trap. The honey trap. Didn't they do that on Rambo, First Blood Part Two. He had that. Remember that cohort? He had <laughs> I don't the know, chick. Man. He he had a girl, a, a Vietnamese girl, if I'm not mistaken, and he meets her. Her name's Ko. Yeah. So they go, <laughs> and they got to take down. You know, they got to save the POWs, and the girl disguises herself as i think a vietnamese prostitute if i'm not mistaken oh. on a moped honey trap yeah 
So they're like, oh, neglecting their duties, all this stuff. Boom, they come in. But to add to the whole scenario, she's like actual warrior, though. Mm. So it's like double layer. Next thing you know, she's getting after it. (laughs) Getting, totally getting after it. Check. Number 32. The empty fort strategy. When the enemy is superior in numbers and your situation is such that you expect to be overrun at any moment, then drop all pretense of military preparedness and act calmly so that the enemy will think you're setting an ambush. This stratagem is to be used sparingly and only after one has first developed a reputation for military prowess. This also depends on having a clever opponent who, in perceiving the trap, may overthink his reaction. That one takes guts. But I guess the, the it not only takes guts, but you might not have any other choice. Right, like your ch- your chance is like okay, we're just gonna act like this is no big deal. Right, just gonna act like this is no big deal. Who was telling me a story about that? Maybe it was you, or maybe it was Jade. <coughs> about being in Australia, were you telling me about that? Mm. Was that Jade? Possibly. What was the story? Oh, uh, like. Oh yeah, I was telling you going in through the alley. Yeah, it was, through the I alley. I was telling you through. about Jade's story. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that on the podcast that you did that? I, I don't think so. But the point is, Jade had a choice: act like okay. So he sees an, a situation could be hostile, mm-hmm. and his choice was like, okay, I don't really even have a choice here. I can either act scared, in which case I'm going to become a victim. Mm-hmm. That's that's, or I can act nonchalant, and there's a possibility I don't become a victim because they see that I'm like whatever. Right. And so that's what he did. And yeah. guess what? The guy was like, good day, mate. How you doing? <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, he was in Australia. <laughs> Next. <coughs> 33. Let the enemy's own spy sow discord in the enemy camp. Undermine your enemy's ability to fight by secretly causing discord between him and his friends, allies, advisors, families, commanders, soldiers, and population. While he is preoccupied in settling internal disputes, his ability to attack or defend is compromised. For some reason I have the word truth written here and I think the reason that oh I this is what I have that re- this is why I have that there I was thinking to myself how do you do this mm. and the one of the best ways to sow discord amongst people is to tell mm. them the truth about what's happening uh, how so well you've got some enemy camp mm-hmm. and you start you start saying hey look <laughs> start saying, look how look how the boss is living <laughs> I got Let's it. just pay attention to how the boss lives. I'm just telling you the truth. The truth is the yep. boss is eating crab legs every night. Yep. You guess what you're eating? Chicken patties. I know. Bro. So I was on the ship. I think it was the I think it was the USS Cleveland, and there was an underground newspaper on the ship. Mm. But there was basically leakers mm. that were telling the troops, the sailors on the ship, what they were eating in the wardroom where the officers were. Yeah, yeah. That word started getting around. Dang. We were eating chicken patties. You try eating chicken patties for forty eight days straight. <laughs> Dang, you, yeah. you know what? No. Hey, that's okay. a lot of chicken patties. You're not you're not gonna you're not gonna want any more chicken patties. No. But then you get word that they're eating crab legs. That was the big one. I don't even like crab legs, but everyone else seemed to like yeah, crab legs. They, they were do. mad when they found out that's what the wardroom was eating. <laughs> so what they did was just the tr- just telling the truth mm-hmm. caused discord. Just telling the truth. Yeah, makes sense. Now, of course, you could weave in some lies, right? But just some I, exaggeration. What I'm saying is, something. oftentimes, the truth is the most powerful weapon. Yeah. To cause discord. Now, I'll always tell you that truth is the most powerful weapon. Definitely, mm-hmm. truth is the most powerful weapon that you have. Like just in general. Just in general. Yeah. Just in general, the truth is the most powerful weapon you have for yourself. Mm. You can be truthful yourself. If you can be truthful with people around you. Now. Does does this mean you tell the truth every single time? No, because you sometimes the chicken is dry and you just need to keep that to yourself, <laughs> right? That's a legit one. We talked yeah. about that before. Yeah. But truth truth is definitely the most powerful tool that you have. And even when it comes to creating discord, the best let me put it to you this way. Let me just I don't want to go through this whole tangent, mm. but the best if you're gonna create discord, it's more powerful to create discord using the truth, truth. than it is trying to create yeah, discord using lies. lies. Because yeah. the lie can be unwound and yeah. figured out. Yeah. The truth, when they go, well, no, that's not true, and then you go, oh, wait, that <laughs> is true? That's a problem. Yep. That's a real problem. Yep. 34. 
inflict injury on oneself to win the enemy's trust. Pretending to be injured has two possible applications. In the first, the enemy is lulled into relaxing his guard since he no longer considers you an immediate threat. The second is a way of ingratiating yourself to your enemy by pretending the energy the injury was caused by a mutual enemy. Hmm. Build that little bit of trust. Remember when I talked about <clears throat> remember when I talked about when you if you come to me and you're emotional, yeah. you're all mad about something and I have to to tamper down the emotion, but I can't I have to show you some of the same emotion. Mm-hmm. I reflect it, but I diminish it a little bit. Yeah. That's a way of building trust between us, right? Mm-hmm. Well, it's the same thing. If I'm like, oh, look what you come and look what they did to me, and I go, look what they did to me too. Yeah, you yeah. Know, that's I the same just, thing. <laughs> they wounded me too. Look at yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm also mad at them. We're a team now. Yeah, I do that with my daughter, by the way. What's that? When she she had a hangnail. This is last night, even mm-hmm. hangnail, and she didn't know what a hangnail is. I think it's her first hangnail. She's mm. five. Sad. <laughs> sad. It's sad because you got hard. all those hangnail hangnails coming your way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, all a very those hangnails, rich hangnail yeah. future. Yeah. yeah, for her. Uh, so I'm like, yeah, I say just little things. Yeah, that used to happen to me when I was little too. So it's kind of like, oh, we both kind of have that same scenario, <laughs> <laughs> same thing, bro. Dude, <laughs> mutual <laughs> hangnail hatred. <laughs> yes. You know, let's bring the team together, <laughs> unite against hangnails. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's real. It's real. I'm, 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 hey, man, I'm, I'm 100 on board. Hangnails yeah. are real. I, I didn't know you had hangnails, man. I have them too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we're, we're tight. A little bit of bond. 35, chain stratagems. In important matters, one should use several stratagems applied simultaneously after another as in a chain of stratagems. Keep different plans operating in an overall scheme. However, in this manner, if any one stratagem fails, then the chain breaks and the whole scheme fails. Now, I completely agree with the first part of this, which is, yeah, you should train these things together, Mm -hmm. which is obviously what we do in jiu-jitsu. You use one move, and that's setting up another move, which is setting up another move, and the defense, that one sets up another move. But I don't agree with the fact that if one of them breaks, they all, the whole thing falls apart. That Mm -hmm. that shouldn't be necessarily true. You should set up your stratagems, Mm -hmm. your stratagems that you expect that some of them are are gonna fail a little bit, and that's okay, because that's why you got the backup ones, right? Right. Yeah, seems like it. Am I wrong? I don't think you're wrong, no. (laughs) And chaining things together, that's, you have to do that. You have to hit from multiple angles and you have to have, that's a, that's the OODA loop, right? That's yeah. like, hey, I'm gonna do yeah. this and then you're gonna react and I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna be there and with the next one, there with the next one and there with the next one. Having a heads up on things makes such a big difference. Yeah. In other words, just so much of winning in jujitsu is that I know what you're gonna do mm-hmm. before you do it. Mm-hmm. So much of winning in combat is I know what you're gonna do before you do it. Setting these things up properly chaining them together so that the enemy doesn't know the opponent doesn't know the next thing in the chain Mm. But you do yeah Yeah, I think he that's powerful. Oh, yeah, I agree the It seems like he's looking at it like the 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 chain of stratagems is like a totem pole where it should be like a tree or like a web or something Yes, you can kind of go and this can break off and it can come back But yeah, his one is like like a straight-up like actual chain, you yeah. know. Yeah, one, yeah, yeah. one link yeah. breaks. It's like oh, the whole chain. Yes. But true. Yeah. Last one, number thirty-six. If all else fails, retreat. Important one. If it becomes obvious that your current course of action will lead to defeat, then retreat and regroup. When your side is losing, there are only three choices remaining: surrender compromise or escape surrender is complete defeat we don't want that compromise is half defeat might be an okay outcome especially when compared to the alternative which is just surrender which is total defeat but escape is not defeat as long as you are not defeated, you will still have a chance. And I think that's a fitting end to this. And again, this is something that people get wrapped around all the time. They don't want to give up. They don't want to give up. They don't want to give up. Mm. In skydiving, you have a malfunction. If you have a malfunction, 
you you try and fix it for a little while at 2,000 feet I think it is <coughs> was, was what I learned mm. in the military free fall at 2,000 feet you make the decision I'm not gonna get that parachute open I'm gonna cut that one away and I'm gonna bring out my secondary but guys would you know in the parachute world and it, right now the parachutes are getting so good that it's it's a lot more rare but guys would get target fixation on trying to fix the bad parachute Ooh. that was up there mm. and they'd look at it and look at it and try and fix 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 it and then they they did hit mm. so sometimes you got to retreat it's okay It's okay. Surrender is complete defeat. Compromise is half defeat. But escape is not defeat. And as long as you are not defeated, you still have a chance. So retreating is smart sometimes. It's okay. And I think that's a good lesson. It's okay to retreat, but never, never surrender. And that's that book. Which definitely some good lessons in there learn some new ones reinforce some other ones hoping that everyone out there listening learned something from that too and if you did and you want to give the podcast some support chiboha mm-hmm. then here's how you can do it and support yourself by the way actually could be the more important thing I think so yes I think it's the more important thing yeah man because yeah like on the plane, right? You know the oxygen mask? Oxygen's coming down. Bro, That's right. You can't just start putting the mask on your kid. No. What if you suffocate? Yep. Can't help nobody. So, so you got to support yourself. Help yourself first. You can't support what we're doing here if you're not on the path. Exactly, right? right. Yeah. Exactly. That's right. the primary thing. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. <coughs> so, to begin, a good way. Let's start with origin. Fitting name for the way to begin the support get it origin layers yes. in the industry we call those layers anyway <laughs> origin this is what origin is it is a american made company that delivers american made products starting with geese jiu jitsu geese for jiu jitsu not just generic geese yeah. with a name on it yeah, not that. No. <laughs> not generic I'm geese. I'm telling you, that's something. These aren't the kind of geese where you'd be like, hey, you know what? I think I'm going to go down to the market right now. Yeah. I'm going to put on my gi. You don't, you, maybe if you're doing that, you maybe don't need an origin gi. You get whatever gi to go down to the market <laughs> yeah. in. Yeah. But yeah. if you're doing jujitsu with your gi, yeah. we recommend you go with uh, the, the origin gi, yeah. which is made in America, which is awesome. The cotton is grown in yes, America. Yes, grown here. American hands. People are working. People are working in Maine. We're bringing that back. So, yeah, yep. get those. And rash guards as well. Yeah. Woven woven material here. Yeah, they kind of got everything. They got, um, you know, regular clothes as well. Joggers, sweatsuits, Some, whatnot. I was having a discussion, which I'm not going to go into, but I will go into this part of the discussion. I was having a discussion with someone that was like, basically telling me like, well, you know, the, the, this, in this business, what, in this business is hard. Mm-hmm. What we do is hard in this business. Mm-hmm. They're trying to tell me that what they were doing in this business was hard. Yeah. I was like, hey, it's not that hard. <laughs> what you're doing, and <laughs> trust me, what they're doing is not that hard. Mm. Trust me, there's some businesses. I, I work with a lot of different businesses. There's some complex businesses out there in the world, really complex. Mm. The business in particular that I was talking to, that I was having this discussion with, that was telling me how hard their business was, which, what does that sound like to you? When someone's like, oh, you know, it's really hard. That's an excuse. Of course, hey, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it, right? Yeah. So, you know, it's really hard. This business is really hard. And I was like, you want to talk about hard? I'm like, try getting an ancient loom <laughs> up and running Ew. and weaving material that hasn't been done in 40 years here in America. Yeah. Weaving, there's eight million little threads going <laughs> into this thing. Try sorting that out. Yep. Don't tell me your business is hard. Yeah, that seems hard. That's sure. hard, but it's being done right here in America. Yeah, big at big. origin. <coughs> yeah, really good stuff on there. Also, supplements. Jocko supplements. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. joint warfare, krill oil, and discipline and milk. So consider these four; they all kind of play into each other. Joint warfare, obviously, warfare against degeneration of joints. 
Not against your joints. It's for the joints. It's your joints waging war on degeneration. Anyway, <laughs> good point. however you want to spin it. Nonetheless, it's for your joints. Krill oil, same thing. Omega-3s, really good for general health as well. If you like protein supplements, milk. See what I did there? I didn't call it protein powder. That's good. Yeah. That's good. It's very understated too, which I'm down with. You can understate it. Yeah. Because the bottom line is if you like delicious things in the world, yeah. you're going to like milk. Yeah. So milk is peanut or not peanut butter. It's going to be peanut butter chocolate. It's about to be peanut butter. Yeah. And those, then, are, those are inbound. Yeah. Someone sent me a picture, a tweet. I think it's on Twitter. One hand chocolate milk jug, other hand milk. He said, I'm going to take it for the team and do the experiment. Remember, mm-hmm. I said mix the milk with chocolate milk. Oh, see what up. Okay. Might be too chocolatey. Might what, be. What was the deal? What was I don't the know. He just said he was going to do it. He, he didn't, didn't report back the yet. Not yet. Uh, that's kind of. He just indicated up. he was yes. commencing with the experiment. That's kind of jacked up. We will have milk at the immersion camp, jujitsu immersion camp, August 26th through September 2nd, <laughs> up in Maine on Echo Lake layers. Mm-hmm. So come up and hang out with me, with Leif, with Echo, with Dave Burke. Still not 100% on JP. But yeah, we're going to be up there in Maine doing jiu-jitsu. And hanging out. Oh, and G- Dean Lister. Oh, yeah. No big deal. Dean Lister. And Andy's going too. It looks like Andy's Andy going. Andy Burke. Yeah, Andy Burke's going to be going. So we, we'll be all just training and getting after it. And hanging out. Here's the thing. It doesn't sound as dope when we're there. hanging out, but here's the thing. It is, ultimately. Well, yeah, because you, <coughs> you can only do jiu-jitsu. How many hours a day can you do jiu-jitsu? Well... You know, depends on who you are, eight? obviously. Call it eight? We'll call it eight. So eight and eight. So eight hours. Then you sleep for eight hours. Right. What does that leave you? Eight more. So eight more hours. You got to fill those eight, eight hours. Eight hours of hanging out, man. That's eight hours of hanging out. Yep. Eight hours of cru- are we cruising? cruising? Is that a cruising scenario? Oh, big time. Yeah, I'll be cruising. Big time if I'm not doing the jujitsu. Actually, so I'll be halfway in jujitsu, halfway oh, yeah, out. you got the injury. Limited jujitsu. Limited jujitsu. Not too limited, but we'll, we'll just say limited. Anyway, yes. Yes, August 26th to September 2nd, is it? Yep. Cool. Yep. Also, good way to support is go to jockostore.com. That's right. Jocko is a store. It's called Jocko Store. Anyway, it's where you can get T-shirts, rash guards, hoodies, hats, you know, all these stuff, uh, products, we'll say, that we put out. Discipline equals freedom. Shirts. What's the new one? What did it... I, Put on there that's new. Oh, is there a new Discipline Equals Freedom shirt? Is that up yet? Yes. Oh, that's cool. It's not up yet. It will be up in a couple weeks. It'll be up in a couple, maybe even one week. So it could be up technically by the time. So it's up. This hits the. So waves. it's up. It's up. All right. It's cool. Up. The Boom. new shirt is up. Yeah, Discipline Equals Freedom new one. Um, but yeah, if you want to represent, go there. JockoStore.com. Oh, use the word represent. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. There it is. Boom. I think it's the new one is uh, take the high ground or the high ground will take you. That's a fact. Something like that. Check. Unless if you um, actually have an email list. Right. And I don't really talk about this. I offer it. Mm-hmm. I didn't want it to be an annoying thing. You know how sometimes uh, you go to a website, it'll pop up in your face and you can't like move sign up, forward. Sign up, sign up, sign up, sign up, yeah, sign up, sign up. You know, so, uh, you know I, I try not you know, to do that. because people want to, they actually use the word, they want to capture Capture, you yeah. Want to capture your email. Yeah. Technically, like, yeah, I don't want to capture. <laughs> We're so out of the game, ones. actually, well, when you think about it. <laughs> We're just not in the game. Well, I considered the whole it. Thing. Like, you you just said, like, how, I mean, even your tone indicated how you feel when a pop-up yeah. with a form, you know, comes in. It's kind of like when you, um, like, let's say you go on a first date with someone and they give you, like, a contract or something. It's kind of yeah. like, hey, sign this before we can take any steps forward with what we already planned we were doing, by the way. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> side note. We do have an email. Li- like, you can sign, put your email and sign up for the email list mm-hmm. if you want. And it's there. It's accessible. But I think it's on the bottom. Uh-huh. If I'm not mistaken, on the other website on the other side. Anyway, it's there. It will not be a pop-up. In here, I'm ever go- and for ever, no, ever, 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 and furthermore, if you sign up for that, you won't get the daily. Oh, you know this and that and this and that and this every day. Because let's face it, K, I, I signed up for. I think it was Bud K. It's called. It's like knives and stuff. They're just cool knives. Mm-hmm. So I signed up for that one, and every single day, man, I'm getting the thing. I'm like, cool. The first day, I'm like, cool. That's cool. Second day, I'm like, cool. That's. Kind of the same thing as you sent me yesterday, whatever. Daily, man, daily. So 
that feeling I got, I don't want other people to have that feeling about <sighs> Jocko's store. So anyway, you can sign up for the email list if you want. And what I will send you every four months, if ever, I'll send you an email that says like, okay, if there's a new shirt that everyone was request, you know how like uh, take the high road or the high road will take you. Mm-hmm. Like people, so many people were emailing me saying, hey, we should do this one, do mm-hmm. this shirt. Do-. So it's kind of that, you know, it's like everyone's input. Okay, new shirt, boom, I'll email everybody. Okay, this is a new shirt. It's like that kind of stuff. And it's very rare. Check. And I don't you've gotten, want it to you've gotten right. input through it before, too. I remember one time you asked for colors. <coughs> or whatever. Right, right, yes. So, yeah, that kind of stuff. It won't be annoying stuff like, hey, three things that you don't care about. Click, you know, I won't do that stuff ever, ever, ever. Check. Nonetheless, that's what's going on. JockoStore.com, if you want to represent, get some stuff. Get some stuff. Good way to support. Also, subscribe to the podcast, this podcast, iTunes, wherever, Google Play, Stitcher leave reviews and all that stuff. And also, if you didn't know, we got the Warrior Kid podcast, yeah. which, yeah, you, you might not think that you would listen to it, but if you got kids, definitely, they'll dig it. And good podcast to listen to. Lately, I've been, lately I've been telling stories from Uncle Jake, from when Uncle Jake was a kid. Mm-hmm. Uncle Jake is sharing stories of his childhood that have little lessons in them. Big lessons. Yeah, even big lessons. And but but they're not their stories. Yep. And that's been kind of the direction <coughs> the last couple podcasts have had a a, a story from Uncle Jake. Mm-hmm. A story from Uncle Jake that we can all learn from. So that is the Warrior Kid podcast. I answer some questions from from Warrior Kids and then they're short too. They're like 20 minutes because Kids should not be sitting around listening to a four-hour podcast. We only do that because we got to like work to do commute all that stuff Yeah, yeah yard work. Yeah, it's good. It's kind of good for the parent actually really good for the parents and teachers by the way No, I've gotten great feedback from parents and teachers Absolutely, because yeah. it's, it's like awesome these que- I mean a lot of their questions the Q&A yeah. kids questions You know they send in and you answer them eloquently. I might add Uncle but, Jake's pretty eloquent. <laughs> yeah, I like to think so for sure uh, but you know in real life, these qu- these kids ask their parents these questions or the teacher, you know, and sometimes, you know, maybe the teacher on the spot, maybe is busy or maybe they don't know or something like that. So, like, you know, I, th- I see it. I know that I do it for myself when I listen to it. I'm like, OK, boom, because I've heard that question before. Yeah. And these answers a little bit better than mine, you know, <laughs> check. Uh, also, the YouTube channel yep. there. We got a YouTube channel. It's called Jocko Podcast, and that's where Echo puts the videos and the video excerpts and enhanced video excerpts. So you can check that out too, which is cool. And yeah, yeah, do that. It's good, a good way to support for sure. Subscribe to you already said iTunes and stuff, yep. Google Play. Yeah, so yep. that's a good way to support. Said that seemingly an easy, obvious thing, but it is a good way to support legitimately. Check. Also. On it. dot com slash Jocko. By the way, okay. What is on it? We all know what on it is. But if you don't know, it's where you can get the best fitness gear. It's where I get all mine. Just I was gonna get a bag. Oh, like the sandbag things? Yeah, I got one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're you, good. They're good. Yeah, like so. You know, it was. I forget it was. If They're it was good you. for the big functional strength yeah like you right? know how um you know what i gotta figure out though remember that bag that they had up in uh maine the 200 yeah, pound yes. bag i gotta figure out what the deal is with that so i can rehearse <laughs> <laughs> it's actually it's pretty simple yeah if you gotta make a game t- time f- adjustment uh-huh. to do it you'd be like okay this is do you hard. have to press it no just clean it yeah put it over your shoulder you have okay. to shoulder it yeah yeah okay so the thing is and i Tell me if this is cheating. Okay, so to lay out the scenario, there's a 200 pound bag of gravel. Not so that's tight. what it is. Yeah, okay. 200 pounds, which is heavy. No handles. No handles. It's a sack of gravel, not a canvas like made out of the yeah. ghee either. It's like nylon. Yeah. Right. So it's real flowy. 200 pounds. Dead. You see, dead weight. It's extra dead weight. Anyway. So, and you got to just put it on your shoulder. That's it. Pick it off. Uh, pick it up off the ground. Put it on your shoulder. So, tell me if this is cheating. So I did it, and I, I, I succeeded. But 
I tri- not the first time. I tried it once and I was like, oh, and psh, you know, it falls down. And I'm like, man. But uh, Mike, one of the guys there, he said, hey, when you lift it up first, you got to keep the weight on the forward part. Because you know, when you lift it up, oh. it kind of divides the bag kind of into, because it flows, you know, all the gravel kind of flows to the, to the ends or whatever. You got to divide it up. But when you div- divide it up, you got to keep more of the weight on, more on the, fo- on, the, on the front part. Not on the the part closer to you because it'll just flow down and it just doesn't work. His his explanation way more short than that. But um, so is that cheating? So it's like, all right, I did it, and then I, I and then it was easy. No, it's not easy. Oh, okay, so it's hard. It's, yeah, it's hard. Like if you practice or something, yeah, yeah, it'll yeah, be yeah, easy. Of course. I mean, you're strong enough to mm-hmm. do it for sure. Um, but, but the technique, there's some technique to involved. get it up there. Yeah, it's 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 hard. Check. But nonetheless, um, the. My point was with the bag is, you know how, okay, you know, you lift a bunch of weights and this guy or me or whatever, we can bench a lot, Mm -hmm. squat a lot. But then, you know, when you're doing like yard work and you got to, I don't know, shovel a bunch of dirt in a wheelbarrow and you're picking it up and you're trying to lift it up this little hill and you're like, bro. Well, it's like when you roll with guys that work construction, they have, they have legit strength that comes to the other side. Exactly right. So I'm like, man, I would buy one of these bags and just sort of like have it part of the workout, yeah. you know, do some hills or something with it, you know, do it, carry it with one man. I do don't know. It. But anyway, on it.com slash it, there's a lot of cool stuff on there, bases and kettlebells and whatnot. All kinds of good, good stuff. stuff. Uh, Psychological Warfare album. You can get on iTunes, Google Play, MP3. We're working on the second one. If you got something you want to me to address <laughs> yeah. psychologically, let me know now. <coughs> and uh, I'll start putting together a little list and we'll get it into your brain psychologically Yep, and Speaking of which speaking of psychological. How's this for psychological right here? Hold on. Here we go mm-hmm. with this You know what that is that right there that's Jocko white tea in a can yep. you can get it You can get it at Amazon right now. It's available in Canada, too and It tastes delicious which is fine. You want things that taste good. That's good. It's good for you. Replace the crap that you drink. The energy drinks that you drink. Re- get rid of them. Yeah. Get this instead. Mm-hmm. You will absolutely feel better. You'll be more healthy. And bonus, you'll be able to deadlift 100% guaranteed 8,000 pounds. So that right there is good enough. <laughs> While you're on Amazon as well, you can get some books. We got the Way of the Warrior Kid books. Just check them out. Just check them out. That's my statement. Check them out. Warrior Kid books. Feedback's unbelievable. Kids getting after it Mm. once they read those books. The Discipline Equals Freedom Field Manual. How to get after it. It's a manual on how to get after it. Yeah, and kind of stay after it. And stay after it, yes. Because if you get after it for a couple hours and then that's all the getting after it you're doing, that's not going to help you. If you crack that book open, though, you'll see. Just crack it open. If you want to listen to it, you can get it as an album with tracks, iTunes, Google Play, all that. It's not on Audible. Mm-hmm. Extreme Ownership is the other book. It's been out for a while. It's still, people still buying it. And it's about leadership. It's about combat leadership and how to use combat leadership principles in your business, in your life, and Obviously in combat as well and then on top of that Leif and I have a new book that we are I keep saying that we just finished it I think it was Tim Ferriss I heard say like oh He was writing a book and he goes yeah I'm done with my book and one of his friends that was a writer was like okay cool You're 50% there and that's the truth (laughs) when you get done writing it you're 50% there because there's Mm. a ton of work that you still have to do Mm. I finished a a round of edits yesterday Mm. and what's cool is reading the book I'm super stoked on the book and people are gonna get a lot out of it it's called the dichotomy of leadership. It comes out September 25th. My publisher, who listens to this podcast, mm-hmm. who hears me say these things, doesn't get it. They're not going to order enough yeah. books. They're like, well, you know, you never know, and we don't want to take too much risk. Mm-hmm. Order the book now so that you get a book when it comes out. First edition. You don't want second edition, third edition. That's lifetime evidence that you weren't in the game. Don't let yeah. it happen. <laughs> And then when you meet me and you're like, hey, can you sign your book, sign my book? And I was like, cool, yeah, I'll sign your second edition book. <laughs> Sadness. <coughs> the first edition, I'll be like, hey, yeah. we go back. Yeah. We go back. 
So like the second edition, you'll just sort of sign your name and then with a line or something. But the first edition, you'll sign like, your name up, and be like, I'm yeah, glad yeah. you were in the game and you were to support that whole one and we're here. We're yeah, together. Yeah. Oh, second edition. How you doing? <laughs> poser. Yep. Are you a poser if you get the second edition? No, man. Maybe. I don't know. Well, anyways, all kidding aside, that's coming out September 25th. If you want to get that dichotomy of leadership, how to balance all those little things you got to balance as a leader. That's what you got to do. Speaking of leadership, if you need leadership training inside your organization, Echelon Front, echelonfront.com. We solve problems through leadership. It's me, it's Leif, JP, Dave. Got Mike Sorelli on board. Boom. Got Flynn Cochran on board. Boom. We're expanding. We're growing. Yeah. We're getting after it. And we got the muster. The muster's coming up in. Uh, October San Francisco 17th and 18th all the other musters have sold out I think we're dropping a video probably already this the video will be dropped the yeah it's latest, already. yeah I know but uh, it hasn't been circulated right so right. we're gonna circulate little what do you call that advertisement video yeah technically informational video informational informational it's more kind of like as if to say, is I'm um, put it as accurately as possible. It's to say, hey, look, the countdown for this thing, because we all knew it was coming. Mm. It's number six. There's number five before that. Yeah. Number hey, we knew it's coming. Hey, the countdown to this event mm-hmm. is official. It's official. We're counting it's the on. days down right now. Cool. It's months, but San Francisco, know. October seventeenth and eighteenth. All the other ones have sold out. If you want to come, better get registered. ExtremeOwnership.com, and also we got the the roll call September twenty first in Dallas, Texas. That is for uniformed personnel, police, firefighters, law enforcement, military, border patrol, paramedics, first responders, all of them. We put that together so that we have, you can get out there one day real quick. Leadership seminar for you all. So same thing. Register at ExtremeOwnership.com. Come and get some. And if you want to continue this conversation with us virtually until you see us live at the muster or you see us live at the roll call or you see us live in August at the immersion camp up in Maine, then during the time where you're waiting to see us live, guess what? We can still kind of carry on this conversation virtually via the interwebs, Twitter, Instagram, and the Facebook. Echoes at Echo Charles. And I am at Jocko Willink. And speaking of those in the military, for those of you in the military that hold the line against evil, and also to those that are in police and law enforcement, firefighters, paramedics, Border Patrol first responders, thanks to all of you for being ready to respond anytime, any place. Thanks to your families as well for supporting you while you support us. And everyone else out there, thanks for listening. Thanks for supporting. Thanks for fighting. Fighting to be smarter and stronger and faster and better. Thanks for putting forth the effort every second of every day. And thanks for remembering what the ancient spirit of Wu taught us. As long as you are not defeated, you still have a chance. So keep getting up and keep getting after it. And until next time, this is Echo and Jocko.